So, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the small exclusive audience here in the rhetoric student studio. We call this the communication corner, uh, and it's a lovely little corner in Medicom Village. And uh, we use this for trainings and lectures and also consultancy uh, privately. Uh, the studio is rented or owned by Susanne Hedin who has Rhetorik Byron, so I just want to thank her for mm -hmm. being able to be, being able to use this today. Um, her company is called Susanne Hedin and Company, mm -hmm. and I am representing today Company. <laughs> <laughs> so we have known each other for 10 years or more, and we work together in various uh, projects in Sweden and uh, outside Sweden. And uh, today I am here without her because she's on sick leave. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are recording and not broadcasting live. Uh, you can always email her uh, and ask questions of this lecture when you see the video or after when you come up to think of something. Uh, I find it very interesting to discuss these things and others with participants after the lecture. Sometimes the questions come much, much later. Mm -hmm. um, I am. Just a little bit about myself. Now, part of you know me, but some don't know me, and I don't know who you are. You <laughs> probably don't know me. So uh, I'm originally from Stockholm. I worked in the private sector for 10 years. And then around the time in the beginning of the 90s, when this new public management came from the US and UK, I was recruited into the Minister of Finance and some of the agencies under the Minister of Finance to do a reform work there, to actually make the private sector be more, the public sector be more like the private sector. So it was this result-based management and looking at outputs and not on what you put in. And uh, around that time, I became, against my will, and I didn't know it, something of an entrepreneur and a change agent. I was identified in the elevator by my head of department said, would you like to be a change agent? And I said, and if your, your department chief, she has 100 people, picks you in the elevator, of course you say, yes. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is that? Change agent. But she saw something in me that I detected much, much later, that I am really that type of entrepreneur. And um, 10 years later, the director general of the Swedish National Audit Office, where I worked well, then it was not an independent institution, it was under the Minister of Finance, was setting up an, a project in Bosnia on creating new external audit of the public sector. And they asked me, she asked me if I wanted to be the project manager. Because this was not really about audit, this was about change. This was in the beginning of the project, setting up the project. So I did that. And then I really, first I fell in love with the Balkans, <laughs> and I realized that I was really from the Balkans. Uh, because for the first time that year, first year, nobody said, could you be a little bit quiet? <laughs> you, 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 can you just maybe not take so much space? <laughs> could you be more like a girl, you know, stuff like that. So I felt like, this is, this is great. I am at home. I can be, you know, I don't have to, you know, try to adapt so much. And also because I saw there, change was so easy. If people think this is absurd, but in Sweden it's so hard, it was so hard for me to drive change in the bureaucracy of Sweden. Because everything is perfect. But when you come to a war-torn country that is building its identity, which was what Bosnia did in these years, this was 1999, so four or five years after the war ended, and a country that was completely destroyed in many, many sense, that, you know, anything is possible. Everything needs to change. Mm. So those people that were there, I mean, I don't say everybody, but in general, I could achieve so much. I, it was like smooth sailing. So this was actually the start of a completely different career now, working on change and working on democratization and anti-corruption and good governance, mostly in the transition countries of Europe. So that's where I then, living still in Malmö, Stockholm, wherever, but working abroad. And when I met Susanne in one of those networking meetings with, you know, small entrepreneurs, because I have a limited company, I'm my own, with only myself, she also has that, and you have this forum where you network, to meet. 
I realized this is the person Barca means. <laughs> so I brought her to Montenegro because she's also, you know, she's also a change maker, mm -hmm. but with communication, but she changes people, she changes organization through communication. And one thing that maybe you, you agree, I don't know, I don't know how it is in Indonesia, but in Georgia and Albania, I think it's the same as in the countries I've been. Um, communication doesn't have a high status. You know, communication is seen like propaganda, information, the art of communication, the academic studies about communication is non-existing. And if you want to change, if you work on anti-corruption and you want to change the way people behave when they are f confronted with corruption, for instance, if you want to turn people into whistleblowers, uh, you have to work with communication. You have to work with awareness raising. You have to work with tools as, you know, how do I convince people? How do I use storytelling? And because this, nobody knows this. There is no, you know, of course there are some people, but it's not everybody's a lawyer, everybody's a, a finance person. There are no communication experts. That's why I bring Susan there. So she works on, on storytelling for uh, agencies for freedom of information and so on. So th this is a very important part in my work that I feel that she can contribute to. So it's a little bit about that collaboration. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about nudging. Uh, and um, I said that I, if, if we just, I do so many things and I usually say that I'm very thin, but very broad. <laughs> but if we just look at that corruption, which is a sort of passion for me, because it links to so many other things, like human right, good governance, efficiency, and you know, making the youth have hope in their society. Um, so if you look at that, um, nudging was actually the way that I wanted to explore how I could contribute more in the fight to corruption. So nudging was, the entry point of nudging was anti-corruption for me. Mm. This might be difficult for you to see in the, in the video camera, but I will explain it. This is how, this is a summary of how I see my anti-corruption map, mm -hmm. let's say. So here you have people, here you have the processes in the organization or in the society, and here you have the institutions, which could be an organization or an institution in a more abstract way, right? Here you have structures, and here you have culture. So for me, it took some years before I realized what I was doing, what I was trying to do. I tried to operate in this, all of those boxes. But I started here. This is where I started. This is what, what I started with in Bosnia. Building institutions with laws, regulations, and so on. Yeah, so that you have that. I did never work with that. The culture of individuals. So, but nudging is all about this, yes. right? So I realized that I have to move up and I need to move there. So I need to go here. This is not what normal, I mean, we don't call it on ethics, but it's still here. And it's, it's nearly here, but we try to pretend it's here, but we don't touch the individuals. So my, my willingness to understand how do we move people, how do how do we, I mean, if you ask people in general, in any country, people say that they're fed up with the corruption and they want corruption to go away, but nobody does anything, right? So it's a little bit like the, the headline of this, uh, this lecture, you know, how, why do we, we know what we want to do, we know what is best for us, but we don't do it. It's a similar formula, right? And I, you know, you can just go to yourself and you can think about how you are struggling with this because I'm sure all of us do. For me, I am, let's say for instance, I think that I'm a quite an experienced driver. I would be argued by my sons, you know, <laughs> if you watch this, that I'm quite a good driver. I'm uh, not a risk taker. Uh, uh, I understand the rules, I know the rules. 
I also understand some of the impact that cars have on humans and all that. Even though that, all that being said, I speed every, nearly every morning going, when I go to the gym. It's a very straight way. It's quite early in the morning along the river's forest beach. And I find myself speeding. And I don't even feel guilty about it, right? I have had a lot of problem in my teeth. I know what it is to have toothache, right? I know how to cure that by the flossing and all. I never floss, right? What is that? What is that with us? I do gym, and I, I, that is one of the things that I managed to change in my life, because for many years I had this lower back pain that you get when you're older, and I knew exactly what would cure it, more exercise. You know, and still I didn't do it. Now I do it. But when I exercise, I don't eat. So I don't eat in the way that it can build my muscles. I know exactly how to do it. I know what to eat, but I still I don't cook. I'm lazy. You know, you live with me. You know that I don't cook. I take something, you know, carrot and apple. You know, so sometimes I'm exhausted when I go to the gym. And I know because I didn't eat the night before. So you probably have same issues, right? You know exactly, you have the fact, you have all that, but you still don't, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, you know this one, mm -hmm. the Da Vinci, the perfect, the homos, that is the perfect one. And this is the conflict between, sorry, <laughs> Homer Simpson, you know. I think it's not perfect. <laughs> you think this is more perfect? Well, good. Well, we should be happy with ourselves yeah. also because it's really difficult to change if we think yeah. that we are just assholes and failures and whatever, you know. You have but, to know yourself first. Yeah. And for me, being now, now we, we are going to try to apply this to our private things, but I'm a policy person, I'm a, you know, reform person. Reforms are often based on this assumption. And then we are faced with that, you know, of course people are not going. So whistleblowing reform, yes, we need to inform people that we have a whistleblower, you know, we need to tell people that and we, we need to have a, you know, a, 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 let's say, investigator for economic crime and so on and so on. But then people are like this, you know, they are not going to go that way to do that. They are laying in the sofa drinking beer and complaining about corruption, mm -hmm. but they are not that rational homos, economos, or, you know, it, it's, it's not that. <clears throat> so nudging is recognizing this, in my view. Yeah. It's recognizing that we have actually what we... We have cognitive biases. Mm. We are not rational. We are not behaving like machines program. We have all these flaws about, you know, brushing our teeth, flossing our teeth, not speeding and all that. And trying to find a person like this to do the right thing and not a person like this to do the right thing. That is completely different measures. You have to be more of a street smart person here, right? You have to trick Homer Simpson to get out of that sofa, mm -hmm. right? It's not about the perfect information. It's to make it easy. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I have the book here somewhere. This book is now 10 years old, but this was the, the, the book that made nudging popular or, or every, every government's treasure. And, and you created nudging unit in, in the US and UK and Denmark and so on. Um, it's written by two guys, Richard Taylor and Cass Sunstein. And they are both Americans. And um, uh, Cass Sunstein is a legal professional, so he's legal, political science type of person. He worked with the Obama administration for a number of years in the regulatory office. I think he was in charge of the regulatory office. So he's very much into politics and governments, but from a legal point of view. So he's the, not the culture, but the structure type structure. of guy, you know, originally. Uh, Richard Taylor is an economist. He got the Nobel Prize, I don't know how many years ago, many years ago, but he got it from his um, work in combining economics with behavior science. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those creators of behavior economics, which is really 
something that led to nudging. So it's like, it, it, it's, a, it's, you know, the Homer Simpson mm -hmm. phenomena in a way. So these two guys met and, and then created this. So it, it has a little bit of, of the behavior science, psychology, economy, because you can see this is a lot of marketing at this. Even when I studied economy and business marketing in, in the 80s, this, this, you can see that there are some things from here. But it also had the political dimension, right? Because of the reform and, and the policies from, from Sunshine. It's a very good book. I think it's very easy to read and it's funny because nudging is normally, it's so obvious that it becomes funny. <laughs> Uh, so I can recommend that one. In this book, there is, or you know, when, when you, you can hear also interview with these guys, they are really funny guys to listen. If you find podcasts with these two, they are so funny. They tease each other and they, are, it's, they have some, some really good personalities. They say that nudge, a nudge or nudging is to encourage or persuade. So it's very positive words, right? someone to do something without restriction and using economic incentive. Mm. So it's without bribing <laughs> and it's without forbidding. Mm. So this is the challenge to any parent, right? How do you raise a kid yes. when you can't bribe them and you can't say you cannot do it because they are going to ask you why. So you have to persuade and encourage. But you can bribe the kid. You, you, of course you can, but if you're going to do nothing, you can't. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, and they also say that sometimes nudging is just about removing those barriers that makes us not uh, do the right thing. But more often it's just simply to make it easier. If you have the image of Homer Simpson, you know that he's a lazy guy. It has to be easy. It has to be effortless, right? Um, and, um, and, and just for, to begin with, a very simple nudge that we see nowadays all the time in, in Gmail is this one. This is a nudge, right? Yes. It's just helping us. It's just pushing us a little bit. It's a, it's a very, we don't think about it as a nudge, but it is. It's helpful. It's, we, we do nudging all the time when we put reminders for our meeting. We schedule a meeting, which is in a way a nudge, but then we say, remind me 30 minutes before. That's a nudge. So we do nudge. What? And you snooze later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't know how to deal with that. Another nudge that is um, quite common. This is also very difficult for you to see, but this is from the Schiphol Airport. Don't know. This is the most, I think, common image of, of a nudge. It's quite old now, and there is this is what do you call it, a urinoir, mm, okay. where you don't yeah. sit but you in the men's yeah, toilet, yeah, you yeah. stand up. Pishuar, and, pishuar. pishuar yeah. yeah. And there is some. Can you see? There is something there. Do you, the fly. fly or, yeah, it's a fly. Why is the fly there? Because you should see. Yeah, exactly. Let me see if I can get them. That's good. I, sh I should use this actually. There, there you can see the fly. So, yeah, the background, do you know this story? Yes. Yeah, can you tell me the story? About the fly? Hey? Uh, no, but I've seen this as a gamification as well with a target in yeah. the bottom as well. Yeah. So, it's all about uh, uh, leaning on the ambitions of uh, men, maybe, to try to compete, to try to hit something. Mm -hmm. um, using this uh, in a different way than it was maybe intended. Mm -hmm. Intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the background to this, do you know the background? No, right? no. The background was that the administration or the management of Schiphol Airport was curious why there was so much cleaning cost in the men's toilet compared to the women's toilet. And saw that this was specially related to this area. And then contacted some nudging expert how to deal with that and said, <laughs> it's easy, just just take the you know the there has to be a focus. The person needs, because I will talk later about system one and system two. You have these things that you do automatically. Go into the bathroom is something you do automatically. You don't think about how am I going to do this now. You know how to do it. And you become lazy and you do it effortless without anything. But if you put this one here, 
you start to have the reflective mind and you have to reflect and you have to target. And then by just painting these ones, they saved 80% of the cleaning cost in the men's toilet. Mm -hmm. it's, so this is, what, this is a perfect nudge. It's so simple. It's so beautiful in its simplicity, and it really tells us how simple we are. Instead of, you know, the, what would the alternative be? What would the normal thing be if we wanted to reduce? What Note. would you do? No, exactly. What would it say? Please sense? try to target. Exactly, please, yes. But that is more like an order, and if you are a person that uh, you don't like orders, for example, I mean, yeah. it's like against that order. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So this is more funny, I think. There is also some soft also in this pichoir, that ah. you can even play with them, just no. like going around. Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of uh, more a funny alternative, yeah. let's say, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. to... The, the ultimate thing would be if this fly would move. That would be the ultimate thing, yeah. because it's really this... Uh, let me see if I can use this one. Oh, where, where do I have toilet? Oh, okay. Oh, shoot. Sorry about this one. Okay. To the laptop? Mm -hmm. yeah, to the laptop, of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it takes time for... Uh, uh, so, the nudging expert said the most efficient in this sense, if this, this is moving, then you really have to concentrate, right? But if you would have, for instance, a bullseye there, it wouldn't be so effective. But yeah. when it's a fly, we somehow assume that it's going to move. Yeah. So, we, so it has that impact on us, that we really concentrate, because we know how hard it is to hit a fly. Right. Yeah. So it's all that experience, but it is, uh, so it is um, a bit of a, a reflective. Yeah. Because what I've seen about nudging is that the initial effect is very strong, mm -hmm. but then the remnants is not as strong. Mm -hmm. That means, it, I think the, the moving part that you're talking about here is, is important, because yeah. if you know that it's always going to be there, yeah. you stop seeing it. Yeah. It's like you put beautiful art on your walls. Yeah. It's beautiful at first, and then you stop seeing it. Mm -hmm. So I think adding movement to this mm -hmm. would still puzzle the brain and it will yeah. work. It also depends on the setting and the context, because mm -hmm. this is the Schiphol airport, mm -hmm. so it's not Medicon village. If you did it here, we would go to the same toilet all the time, mm -hmm. and then it would yeah, actually yeah, appear. Yeah. But this works here, because mm -hmm. you know it's new to everyone who enters, more yeah. or less. Right? But you are right. Mm -hmm. there, you have to think about the sustainability in, 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 the, in the activities you take. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll take another example that is also quite fun. Mm -hmm. okay. This one. Okay, this could be hard also for the poor videos, but this is, you can see here there's a lot of cigarettes, mm -hmm. used cigarettes, and up here it says, who is the best player in the world, Ronaldo, Ananairo, or Messi? Mm -hmm. So this is also appealing to some sort of, uh, you know, playfulness in us. And um, in a way, um, I think that this is, uh, when we smoke, it's also this system one and system two. When you smoke, you automatically drop the cigarette. You don't think about what you're doing. Even if you have an ashtray there, maybe you just, because you're talking on the phone and you just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's something that is not reflected, it's automatic. This makes us go from the automatic into the reflective mind. And of course, the interesting thing here is that, <laughs> I'm not too aware of anything, the invisible choice yeah. is throwing the cigarette. But it's, the choice is not really there because you feel that you have to, Mm -hmm. Unless you have no clue who they are, then well, they should yeah. be, I don't know, or I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you were, uh, yeah. you were uh, nudging and gamification, yeah. which is which. Because to oh. me, this can be gamification as well. Is there yeah. an overlap between nudging and gamification? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Because this is making a competition out yeah. of something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. But, it's, but for nudging, it's about, we will do that in the end, it's about attraction, mm -hmm. to attract people, to, to you know... To sift. Yeah, to, to, yes, exactly, and to, to make you do, look the other way or do something. And to, I find that nudging is also doing something that you shouldn't have done uh, 
otherwise without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm also thinking about smoking in Malmö now when you, when you can't smoke in the outdoor yeah. areas of restaurants. And I live co close to Lilla Torg, which is a big, big place for restaurants in Malmö. Where are the people going to smoke? And in the beginning, people were just standing on the square smoking. And that's pretty irritating when you cross that street mm -hmm. uh, every day. And, you know. So then they put a little bench. Way larger. Yeah. Which, which is good, a bench is good, but a bench is not enough, especially not in Malmö where it's blowing all the time. So people want to be in sunny spots and corners yeah. and so on. So the bench was not that much, but then they added USB. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go there without even seeing, oh, it's, you know, because this is what we like. It's, it's, somebody told us the other day, the bottom of the Maslow pyramid nowadays is not shelter and food, it's battery. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's all about that. So we find our ways, but we don't think about, okay, now I'm sitting in a non-smoking area. I say, okay, I can charge my phone. Mm -hmm. So it's about outsmarting us a bit. Can I also add mm -hmm. about this yeah. picture? Besides the Ronaldo and Messi, I would say that this picture helps to nudge about quitting the smoke because it really is <laughs> yeah. ugly, right? I mean, yes, exactly, yeah. yes. It's so ugly that yeah, yeah. It's, it has like two perspectives. One thing is that, okay, yeah, don't yeah. throw it yeah, down, but yeah. the other thing is that, oh my God, yeah. look at that, yeah. you, yeah. you do that. Yeah, yeah exactly, yes, <laughs> yes. So what would happen if you shape these as two black lungs instead? Oh my God. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this, this is very good. good. Yeah. Or transparent lungs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that would that, be like, yeah. because I think it's I don't think that this kind of advertising works for smokers. <laughs> and this is a smoker, so, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm that's a smoker, so okay, yeah. I don't no, care no. if I see like. No, but if you see this. For example, yes. Yeah, this is, is really part. ugly and like. Yeah, it makes you feel like a lot of cigarettes in your. In your yeah. yeah, because it's not direct. It's not about yeah. stop no, smoking. No, 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 no. no, no. It's yeah, about I find it really. If I, if yeah, I, yeah, please. I find it really the nice uh, poster in uh, EOS. Mm -hmm. Outside, so it was kind of a, a hash track, mm -hmm. and uh, on the top of hash track, it was a, a squirtle and with a cigarette. And it said that please throw this uh -huh. on the hash track because the squirtle can smoke it if you leave it outside. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it was kind of a yeah. funny thing, yeah, 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 yeah. Squirtle with a smoke. <laughs> and, and that is appealing to our empathy with yeah. animals yeah. and so yeah. on, yeah. not nature yeah. of yeah, our yeah, empathy. Yeah. Yeah, but I think in my country, we especially with this kind of case, you know. This I mean, is from Indonesia now. Yeah, no, okay. the way they promote. Yeah, in in some some people still still thought that still think that uh, smoking is a, is a bad habit. <laughs> but the way they use this kind of nudging principle, but in the, in I think in the negative way by promoting that oh the successful man with nice car and uh, oh, whatever okay. is a smoker yeah, 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 yeah. because the pro that's the promotion. <laughs> That's how it was here in the 60s, right? Oh, yeah. The mall were a man. Yeah, mall were a man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, but so, so, so for the smokers, it more convinced themselves that, oh, this oh. is a good yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. things to do yeah, yeah, because yeah. the successful man did the kind of thing. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's also about what kind of behavior you want to achieve. Because if we should design these as lungs that get more and more filled with cigarette butts when you put them in, mm -hmm. that's to prevent people from smoking. Yeah. Here you want to catch the butts, yeah. Yeah. so you don't want yeah. them to drop them on the floor. No. So I think that's yeah. how yeah. you should think when you do yeah. the nudging, yeah. what yeah. effect you want what to get. Yeah. Mm. And actually when you, when you work on nudging and implement nudging, it's a sort of guerrilla research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, 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 you do something, you, you measure something first without this. And then you see how people move and so on, and then you put this in and then you measure again. So it's, it's, it's actually very, and that's what I like because I work a lot on policy development. Mm -hmm. That you develop policies not for this uh, Da Vinci, da Vinci. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but for the Homer. But you have no idea what Homer is going to do because he's so unpredictable in some ways. I mean, his brain works in mysterious way. So you have to study him. And, and then you have to issue the, the thing, the nudge, and then you have to study, because maybe he is not actually doing what you thought. So it's a sort of very empirical guerrilla way of checking and, and further develop policies. Um, I wanted to move to the system one and system two, because I think that is quite... Oh, that's it. Yeah, this is my son. <laughs> This is what, what we call system one thinking. When you see this, you intuitively 
automatically, effortless, know what this is, right? This is an angry man. Mm -hmm. You need to be a little bit, he, he tried to look angry, I yeah. think. <laughs> he normally is very nice. Uh, but you know, you, you need to back off. Yeah. It's, it's, it, maybe you would also call it a little bit primitive, right? You know this. So this is the system one. Defensive, yeah. Yeah, but you, 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 you don't have to think yeah. and analyze this picture to know what it is. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Right, so that is the, the, uh, what we call the system one. This is system two. So now your brain starts going into, from being in the automatic mode into the reflective mode, and you start thinking like, okay, I recognize this is a multiplication equation. I probably can't solve it now. I think I need to have paper and pen or a calculator. It's probably not 565, but neither 50,000, somewhere in between, and so on. But there's no way that you can automatically say that this is 4,063, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this process that I described is the reflective mind. This is not effortless. This takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. This takes a lot of focus. Mm -hmm. Generally, we as persons want to avoid to be too long here, because it is too hard for us. We prefer mm -hmm. to be in automatic. And a lot of things we do are in automatic mode. And nudging plays with these two, as with the fly. Very often it goes, it actually, it works, um, it tries to use uh, our automatic response, our automatic perception. But sometimes, as with the fly, and with the Messi and, and Ronaldo, it also uses this for a very short time. So I think this is the, the book, uh, Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow, which is also written by Daniel uh, Kahneman. Kahneman, who was also a Nobel Prize laureate. So, you know, mm. also American. I, mm. I, uh, so, you know, that, that, that is also a very funny and useful book to read, I think. There are so many of these books that I think are just copy of others, but these are two good books. And it's quite related to, to nudging. Uh, system, talk about system one, I think this is system one. This was something I found on the line, uh, online. So we have, this is about again the guerrilla empirical research, the guerrilla research. We have two situations, situation A and situation B. Two days or morning or afternoon in the shop, and uh, they are measuring how many bottles of red wine and f uh, red wine from France and from Germany is being sold. Right. So in situation A, 40 bottles of red wine and 10 uh, German, and then only 10 French. German wine has a little bit of problem to reach the peak, but more. So now the question to you is, what, there has been a nudge here of some kind, or let's say a, a, a nudge or an, an interaction that changed people's behavior. Because nudging is really also to do something for people's best, and I'm not sure that it's for people's best to drink that wine, but it tells you something about behavior anyhow. Can you think about what they did that people choose this. So it's not about forbidding and it's not about economic incentive. So it's not lowering the prices or putting the... Yeah. Displaying some kind of food next to the wine that mm -hmm. is suitable for the French or for the mm -hmm. German wine. To, to actually gain the attraction. Mm -hmm. Could be. It's not that, but it could be. It's a good suggestion. Maybe there are different wines. The red are more French and white are more German. No, it's the same wine. Mm -hmm. it's so actually, they didn't change anything in, you know, how you see the shop. Playing music. Exactly. Very good. Uh, mm. yeah, yeah, if you what? play German, German music, music or French music in the store, you, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, yes. you connect the, the wine to the ambience, to the feeling. So if it's a German, like an Oompa Boompa march, maybe you <laughs> select the German, or it's a French beautiful hmm or something. So French music played and German music played, yeah. right? So that's our, um, this is like subconscious, this is our automatic, we do, you know, this is not reflecting French wine, I should have that grape, because sometimes when you buy wine, 
quite often when I buy wine, I'm not in the automatic mood, I'm in the reflective mood, mm -hmm. right? Um, so this is something that, you know, we can use. And this is what stores use music in shops. So there is also a study now that I heard about using music in gyms. Mm -hmm. If you want to exercise longer without, you know, because normally if you run or if you're on the treadmill, you think I'm going to do 20 minutes mm -hmm. because everybody knows if you do less than 20 minutes, it hasn't got an effect. So everybody strives for 20 minutes and something. Mm -hmm. And then even I know how many songs there are in 20 minutes. You know? So I know if I do six songs, then I'm nearly there and so on. So, yeah, but we, we, because we are all Homer Simpson somehow, we try to uh, ease the way out. So what they did, instead of playing the normal, because we all know how the music are in gyms, it's quite the same type of music, they play completely absurd, like country and western or something, jazz music, which was just, like people, uh huh? And then people were so concentrating on the music and what was happening. Yeah. So I when you ask them with the normal music how long they thought they had been in the gym, they knew more or less. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. But with the abnormal mm -hmm. music, they underestimated it. They were there much longer. Mm -hmm. And they didn't feel like it was more of an effort. So music can be used in so many ways because it really triggers something. Mm -hmm. Yeah emotions and you know and we are attentive to music or non-attentive because there's music in, in stores that we don't hear but that influences us it's it's quite interesting and this uh, there is a um, this was uh, this Kendrick and Hargreaves and North in 1999 that did this study on wine and music and Shina, we had music at the lecture do you remember when we yeah. were brainstorming yeah. it was so good, so good. Yeah, what no, was that know? We had one of the lectures at Mammon University, yeah. we had to do some group work, and there was music, and it was the first time that ah. I saw the music on the lecture. Oh, this is interesting. Was so what, nice. what was your experience? Very dynamic. Ah. It was very, it was good match to this brainstorming and... Uh, so somebody had thought about the type of music also, you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Definitely. And it was so, yeah, now I, I remember that lecture very yeah. well. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's also, yeah. we also attack members to music. Yeah. yeah, I think it's related to this kind of um, um, music stuff. I think in my country, you know, like in order to attract people without giving like some um, a discount or promotion, so in some restaurant or cafe, they put more, even though the food is just so-so, but mm -hmm. they put a nice comfortable furniture and uh, covers and everything mm -hmm. to make people come and stay mm -hmm. even longer, you know, mm -hmm. so. And then also make the, the background is Instagrammable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagrammable. <laughs> 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 the first time I heard it, it's <laughs> great. <laughs> 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 Instagrammable is like the actually the, the food is, is the food is just very so so. It's just it's not that good. Mm -hmm. But they make the places comfortable and nice mm -hmm. by, by interior and the background. You can take a lot of good pictures. Good pictures yeah. and it become a promotion for yeah. this and kind of restaurant. And you have many likes of Instagram. Without even giving <laughs> more discount or. Uh, the price the price is expensive even more but people still can come yeah, because yeah, of the, yeah, it's yeah. nice place to, to be yeah nudging has been used a lot in, in yeah. commercial i mean yeah. i i remember when i studied marketing as part of my bachelor um, the play because it's also you know they talk about these how you design mm -hmm. the, the interaction how you design the environment where you make the decision uh, and they talk about design architect or choice architects in nudging. Choice architect is, you know, something that has been debated. And people would say, critics would say that nudging is manipulation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's when, uh, when these guys said, nudge is something that you do and after the nudging has resulted in a changed behavior, people don't regret that behavior, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it's for the good, good of the person. Everything else is not nudge. Oh, it's sludge. Uh, Sorry, sludge. Sludge is like mud that comes off yeah. from a factory or something yeah. like uh, that. That's sludge. So sludge would be uh, manipulation yeah. in that sense that you what you were describing yeah. a little bit or what I remember very clearly because I checked that when I was stupid and it was true that you put the milk in the far bottom end of the shop 
Mm -hmm. Because especially at that time in Sweden, we drank a lot of milk. You know, every child had at least two glasses of milk, and it was thought that this was like the backbone of our food mm -hmm. consumption. So you always had to buy milk when you were in the store. And if you passed through the store, you would have all this exposure to, you know, things that you saw, what a good offer, or yes, I'm a little bit peckish or whatever, and you brought a lot of things. That's sludge. Mm -hmm. Because afterward you come home and say, why did I buy these mm -hmm. peanuts? Why am I eating these peanuts? And you know, mm -hmm. and you regret yourself and it's not for the good. Mm -hmm. And these choice architects that they talk about in Najin are really the justification because that could be seen as manipulation then by critics. But what they say is that we always had choice architects. There is nothing, you know, when, when, when you, for instance, if you talk about the cafeteria or store, you have to design it, you have to make choices how you lay it out. So it's better to do it in a nudge way than in a sludge way. Mm -hmm. That's because that's what people normally talk about in nudging, what is the border between mm -hmm. manipulation and... Uh, so, so your definition on, on regretting the behavior is, it defines if it's nudge or if it's sludge. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Part, and also this about if it's good for you or not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, an early history about uh, subliminal messages, mm -hmm. where you in in a film you mm -hmm. cut in mm -hmm. yes. simple sequences which you don't you don't really observe them, but they are there. Mm -hmm. So your mind mm -hmm. catches them. Mm -hmm. So that would be sludge that because be that sludge. intention is usually to put you in a certain mode or to yeah. promote something. It's clearly manipulation, yeah, right? Because we don't even know no. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they could put cut in Coca-Cola clips and yeah. then everybody would buy Coca-Cola mm. after the film. Right? So you don't know why you want Coca-Cola, no. but you want it. No, yeah. no. <laughs> you, you, you are, I yeah. remember the first uh, marketing that my borrowed digitally in the United States, maybe you know that. They just, how to enter to the market, because the Lucky Strike was so powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just got some empty packages and threw it to the streets. Ah! And people, it's not like the normal, like, Giving people free cigarettes to smoke, they will do like okay. They were empty. Empty packages, just threw it, destroyed, oh, just threw yeah. it, and people said, "Oh, a lot of people are smoking." <laughs> ah. <laughs> Maybe it's good yeah. to buy. Yeah, this is also very Never. good that you said this. <laughs> so there are a number of these cognitive biases, and this, we have very short time, so I can't go into all of them. But one of them, which is quite important, is this herd mentality. Yeah. We are social creatures. We want to do what everybody else does and that is something that you can use <coughs> when you develop when you when you have actually when you make there I'm going to mention that briefly but in UK tax authority when they send out reminders to people to pay their tax if they have forgotten to pay their tax business and, and private persons but they used to just have an angry reminder you know please pay it or we have to you know put us in jail or something like that but then the nudging unit was installed in Downing Street number 10, and then there was another approach. So the approach was, most people, or 90% of all taxpayers in the UK, pay their tax on time. You are one of the few that haven't done it. Big change. Not an angry word, just pointing out, you are the odd one. And nobody wants to be the odd one. I mean, of course there are criminals, you know, tax evasion, but generally we want to do good, but we don't do it. It's, it's about the story of me and driving uh, and speeding, you know, so it's quite interesting. I will just, uh, are we running out of time? No, not yet. Not yet? I don't, I have no idea what time is. Okay, let me just, um, this is a, a hospital in Denmark. And this, uh, this is something I prepared for the 13th of March, which is pre-corona in Sweden. But I decided to bring it here anyhow, because I think it's interesting. It's a little bit about the choice architecture and, and that. So um, we didn't know that. Maybe now we know it, but I'm not sure that everybody knows it. But when, when you look at the hospital and you look at the risk for the patients in the hospital, one of the major risks are visitors. Mm -hmm. Which, when I heard this, I was like, what? 
I thought it was, you know, the operation could grow. No, they are pretty good experience. The problems are the visitors, because the visitors, and you think about it, try and think in pre-corona mode now. You go to the hospital, have you ever made sure that you were completely disinfected before you went to somebody who just had the surgery, right? Mm -hmm. No way. Does the hospital help you to do that? Not at all. So here you have entered into the hospital, you have gone to the reception, you are asked where your father is who just had some, you know, operation. You are now in the right, you've taken the elevator, you met a lot of people, and now you are on the right floor, on the right, and you're just going to go here and your father is going to be in one of the rooms. Here is the hand sanitation, right? Very well. Choice yeah. architect, yeah. right? Yeah. You have chosen to put it there. Because why? Because the water is here. Because it's convenient for the plumbing, or I don't know. Without any thought about the risk aversion. So then this is in Denmark, and, and um, Ritz Hospitalet, uh, one of the biggest hospitals in Denmark, in Copenhagen. And the nudging unit did some work there. I think this was part of a research project with Roskilde University. Uh, and uh, they thought, okay, we have to change this. What do you what do you want me to talk to? You? <laughs> okay. So instead, they did this in the end. So before you even enter, I mean, this is like the the entrance yeah. hall, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there is a reception here. Before you enter this area, it says hand sanitation. This is handsprit. And there is the hand sanitation there. It's completely different. And how simple is that? Yeah. Mm. And why didn't anybody think about that? So they actually did two things. First, they just put that one up. And then they put this one up. And it says, um, here we use hand sanitation or hand disinfections in order to protect your relatives and friends. Mm -hmm. It's the same as with this squirrel or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the emphasis. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to do good. Make it e easy to do good. Rem take away the barriers, yeah. and it had actually quite some good effect. Wow. The baseline study, only the hand sanitation, the placement, and the sign and the placement. Ah. Was it expensive? <laughs> Probably not. Think so. <laughs> Probably not. But it, it's because we know that we are Homer Simpsons, right? Mm -hmm. Homer Simpson cares about his family. He's just a funny guy that is a bit lazy, you know. But if it's in there, mm -hmm. and also it's also about the herd mentality or the social creature, even if we are, let's say that I don't believe in hand sanitation, I have dry skin, I don't want to do it. You don't want to be seen to go there, pass that sign yeah, and go in, right? <laughs> because it's a shame and we, you know, we don't want to be the bad guy. So it's a really clever way of, of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one that I like. This is a little bit blurry. You have probably seen some of this. This is in Iceland. I think it was first, the first Iceland saw, the, there was somebody in, the, in one of the municipalities, or maybe it was the yeah, government. It's a 3D, it's a 3D, 3D painting. painting. It's painted yeah. like this. So that she saw it in, in, in India, in Delhi, and then she made it in Iceland. So it's a very clever way of, again, is this system yeah. one or system two? No, 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 why? One. System yeah. one. Because it's not about oh, yeah. thinking. It's just, wah! Uh, uh, have to break. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's, it's just very it's automatic. Right. It's not reflecting. Now I come to a school here, there will be children. Yeah. Oh, there is a pedestrian. Yeah. Now I have. It's just like this. Yeah. Uh, this is, um, this. I think this is mentioned maybe in the book nudging. I don't know. But uh, it's it's in, in from Chicago. So it's from where the, the authors of the book were 
uh, at the time when they wrote the book, they worked there. So this is uh, Lake Michigan, and this is the Lake Shore Drive. It has a very steep curve here, you see, which had a lot of accidents. Mm -hmm. And people, it's, it's sort of a highway that comes into the city. Uh, so in order to create this optical illusion, they painted these uh, white stripes that become closer and closer and closer. So you feel that you are, as you are accelerating mm -hmm. when you drive, because you do, 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 yeah. and then you break. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So by doing this, they reduced the traffic accidents by 36% mm. in the six months after this compared to the six months before. It's a pretty mm. simple mm. nudge, but when you think about this, we see a lot of these nudging. Also the bumps are nudging, mm. but I think these are more spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate the bumps. <laughs> I prefer these as a driver. Okay. Is it, yeah. is, it, is it here in Stockholm that the guy from, I think, from Serbia that created this uh, stairs piano? Ah, oh, where natural? is that? Yes, in, I don't know. Yes, yeah. yes. This is also a nudge. Yeah, it's a nudge. Do you yeah. want to tell us about it? You can tell us. Yeah. Okay, I, I have seen it. So it's another thing. So because nudging primarily, when it entered the government policy sector, it entered, and it, I think it says on the book, actually, uh, improving decision about health, wealth, yeah. and happiness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it really started in the health sector. Mm. And one of the things about health is not about well, we're dying here, but it's, it's also about so exercising. Mm. And you, normally you would see um, you know, a, a staircase in a Grand Central Station or somewhere. You would see two of those escalators going up and down on the side. In the middle is a big area where there are stairs. Mm -hmm. There are nearly no people in the stairs. Yeah, of course. Especially <laughs> not going up. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. But everybody's queuing to go there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go quicker. Anybody who has tried the stairs knows that in rush mm -hmm. hour, especially that is the quickest. Yes. So, you know, and this is a very, this is how you can nudge yourself also to, you know, how can we make the stairs by maybe telling us it's quicker. Because we think it's quicker because it moves, but it's not quicker. <laughs> So what what this I don't know if it was a serving guy it's yeah, even it's, more. It's an NGO I think yeah. who won a project in Stockholm. I think it is Udenplan uh, tube station. Okay. I think so. Where they did actually made these stairs in the staircase in the middle to note. So when you went there you could play yeah. the piano. Yeah. 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 So it was it <laughs> was <laughs> yeah. maybe maybe I don't know. I haven't been there. I was thinking if everybody walks there must be commotion on the yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But it is a way that build on the nudging principle of gaining attraction. Yeah. You know, because everybody's looking at the escalator, nobody's looking at the stairs. Yeah. But even in interaction with other people, so you just be there as yeah, 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 yeah. Playing yeah. here, so yeah, yeah, kids yeah. playing together. Yeah, yeah. It could also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I'm not sure you want kids to play together when <laughs> people are rushing to work <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. on. But it is, exactly. it's, it's a way of you know also using nudging. some some nudging techniques. Um, what is the time? Um, five to five. Yeah, good. Do you want to ask a question? I, no, not a question. I just wanted to make a comment that I think this is very directly connected to sustainability. Yeah. 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 It would be so uh, creative and also, also very important to include the, the, the things that you were yeah. talking yeah. about yes, uh, in, this, uh, in increasing people's awareness on sustainable mm. yeah. way of yeah. you know, life or something. And it's, yeah, it's one of the most important tools, I think, in, uh, in, in bringing people closer to yeah. Sustainable decisions and mm. lifestyle. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think, and I see that moving from health now, it's a lot about climate change and environment and recycling. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I will just summarize by two slides um, because I wanted to show examples. I think nudging is is a very it's very easy to lecture about it because you can show all these examples yes. and people are like yes, of course. And but let's try to summarize this in some sort of. Uh, um, structured way. So I talked a lot about attention, right? To make things relevant for you with the hand sanitation. You know, it's relevant. It's my it's not only the government saying that I have to do it, it's my father who is there. Uh, seize attention and plan for inattention also, you know, to take away some attention and, and to, to 
So here we have the example, we looked at the hand sanitizer. Uh, the paper bins, I will just talk a little bit about that. The paper bins in Copenhagen. I don't know if you have noticed, and I don't know how much you are in Malmö, but Malmö has this Malmö green, which is a green, very dark green, that nearly disappears. And I think the idea is to have all the benches and bins and everything, and the, the rails on the bridges in Malmö green. And it really doesn't stick out. It looks like it's natural. This is very calming. When it comes to paper bin, it's completely contraproductive. Mm -hmm. Nobody sees the bins. Right? <laughs> the bench you are probably looking for because you want to sit, but who is looking actively for a bin? Very yeah. few people, right? Uh, again, think about Homer Simpson. Mm -hmm. So one thing that Copenhagen, and Copenhagen had a lot of problem with littering in the city. So what they did, and again, the nudging unit said, well, you have to change the color of the bins. It's very easy. They have to be visible. No, this is Copenhagen green. Yeah. Okay, well, then you have a problem. So what they were allowed to do was to do these very uh, lime green steps on the pavement uh, to, to get there. So you would say, what are, oh, there's a bin. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, they could actually put some paper uh, posters in the middle of all that Copenhagen undetectable green, lime green saying, Copenhagen, keep it clean or something. So it's, it's, uh, this is about <laughs> inattention, the plan to get the attention. The diabetes testing is also very interesting because if you want to test people for diabetes, you have to fast for quite a number of hours before that. Mm -hmm. So what they did in um, Kuwait, they did a diabetes testing during Ramadan. Mm -hmm. This is also seizing attention in another way, you know. So it's, it's easier for people. They're all mm. Then we have the belief formation. This is the Lakeshore Drive. You know, believe that you are speeding. That's why you're braking, to trick the mind. But there is also this guided search, which is quite, now I don't have time to, to, to do it, but it's, uh, it's something that is more and more popular on our websites of the government. This one is... Uh, the UK government, if you want to know if you have the right, the, you know, if you're allowed to work in the UK, there is a guided search. You click there and you, go, you first say, are you a citizen of UK? No. Do you have an EU membership? You click yes. And then there are a lot of answers. After five or six questions, you get the answer if you are or not. So it makes, it's a guide instead of just saying, here is all the information find out for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So it's that guided search. So that is part of the belief formation, that you feel that you are trusted in the process and you get guided through it. Um, and the last two are choice and destination. So um, we talked about making it attracting, frame the prospect and make it social. So most people pay their taxes in time, right? <laughs> Don't mess with Texas. That was also about littering in Texas. So Texas had a lot of problem with littering around the highways. And the ones that threw out the garbage through the car was observed to be male between 18 and 30. In Texas, pretty nationalistic. Nationalistic in the sense of Texas being the nation. So they created an information campaign with bumpers on the car saying, say, don't mess with Texas, instead of don't litter, because litter didn't have that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sound. It was more like, you know, dogs are littering. Mm -hmm. Don't mess with Texas has that double meaning. And it became so popular that it was on mugs and t-shirts <laughs> and everything. And it became cool to be that one. Because I'm Texas, don't mess with Texas. So it, it, it was also a little bit of making that attractive to people. Knowing what is your target group, right? And what are their values. And then we have the determination, which is, the, for me, it's really hard, the determination privately. So you have to work with friction, make it easy, take away the barriers, plans and feedback and create commitments. So for instance, here you have, this is quite interesting, 
the blister pack of paracetamol, you know, when you put the paracetamol, not in a big can, loose, but you have them in the blisters, so yeah, you have to... Yeah. This was actually made because they wanted to prevent suicide by swallowing them, or children having it by accident. So here you create a barrier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same as with the, the lighter, that is, this, this thing on the top is not... Like, oh, it's not here. They uh, put a, a thing here, uh -huh. so it's more hard for kids to... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. kids' safety. Yes, of course, yes. Yeah. And it's also sort of a choice architecture, because yeah. you, you know... And you have this... Um, one thing with determination, so it makes it... You know, if you just... If you, if you, if you are thinking about killing yourself, you know, I don't want to make a joke of this, but if you are doing it, making it as hard as possible. Yeah. So you have to think it through. So it's about, you know, weakening determination or make you think. But sometimes you want to increase determination. And one problem that we have, which is also one of those cognitive bias, is that we have really easy to control what we're going to do in the future, but we cannot control what we're doing today. So we are putting up doing things to tomorrow, which means that a lot of people don't have enough saving for their retirement. Yeah. But we have a lot of money today, even though we don't have it tomorrow. So there is a struggle here for government to, and also come maybe for companies, to try and see how can we encourage people to be determined actually to pay part of their salary into pension scheme. And it has been tried so many times, various things, and nothing has actually had any good result. But a nudging thing that had result was that you ask people to say, Okay, we need you to, we want you to put 2% of your salary into pension scheme. I said, no, no, I can't afford it. No, not now. When you get your raise, we will take 2% of the raise, or 5% of the raise. And then people have no problem committing. Because we have so, I'm going to, you know, it's the new year thing. Next year I'm going to start doing it. We are very determined about the future, but we are, so this increased the pension saving dramatically. I think it was in the US they tried that. So it's about how do we fake, how do we trick ourselves to be determined or to make it more difficult. So these, the choice, determination, and the attraction, attention, and the belief formation are things that you play with in, in nudging. Thank you. Yeah, you can have a question. I have a question. Yeah. I think like nudging is more like, okay, like we know something can be beneficial for the people, and that's sort of, but we don't want to force people to do that, so with effort less they want to do it by themselves, but mm -hmm. how can we nudge ourselves? Yes, exactly. So we can nudge ourselves by realizing that one cognitive bias is that we want to do what people do most, and we are care about what other people do, so we can enter into social contracts with others. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you have a problem, uh, uh, you want to be fit, you want to go to the gym, you don't do it. Then you make an arrangement in Maya, we're going on Tuesday on 8. Then it's very unlikely that they cancel that, because you have made a social contract. Mm -hmm. So social contract, social contract, and also tell people, you know, from today I'm going to work out every Wednesday morning, so I'm going to be a little bit late, you know. <laughs> So people say, if you're early on, I say, well, didn't you, are you not supposed to, you know, <laughs> to ask to tell people what you're doing, you know, to, to, to f f make yeah. that, you know, I think that is how you have to tie the hands, you know, a little bit. So realizing that what other people think about us, and that we are not the odd person out, that is a, a, a good start, I think, from that. Yeah, social contact is a good social contact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, but it's, there are so many things. But I think also realizing that how, how we work and this cognitive bias, learning more about ourselves. That, you know, yeah. yeah. Nice. Thank you so much Very for coming. Thank you. <laughs> and being so interactive. <laughs> so let's yeah, turn off the bye over there. <laughs>